Hallelujah. Let's put a draw on the Holy Spirit here this morning. Let's just put an expectancy. Each one of us, uh, God's going to going to minister his purpose into our hearts. Amen. Um, so Pastor Kim shared with me last week, wasn't that good? Um, uh, you know, uh, whenever God speaks through us, it's him speaking. We just get to be the vessel. And so that's what I desire here for, for us this morning. I want to continue on that, on that vein a little bit uh, about acknowledging God. Um, because I think there's a, there's a tendency, you know, there's a, there's a, how many have app, Apple uh, devices? And, you know, one of the main things on there is the, the FaceTime thing, right? Um, so I have a sister in Australia, and this is just totally amazing to me. This, Buddy could probably uh, give me some insight on this more, but. I can sit down, even right now, and pull up FaceTime, and I will talk to my sister with hardly any delay in Australia. Is that amazing? And, you know, what's, what's kind of funny is, is we, you know, we, we're streaming back there, and there's a delay from the camera to the screen back there. And yet, they got FaceTime down to where you can virtually talk to somebody that far away. And it's really cool. It's, be, it's wonderful for families. My parents, you know, they live up in Colorado. And, you know, they don't get to, to actually be with them that much. But there's a tendency for us in our culture today for there to be this uh, virtual relationships all the time. Virtual friends on Facebook. Virtual all of this stuff. But you know what? Real FaceTime isn't through a device. It's face to face, isn't it? And uh, and I'll get I'll get to this a little bit more down down the way, but um, there's there's a transmission. You know, there, our our nation right now, our world right now, is going through uh, an effect of how something can be transmitted if you get within a proximity of somebody, right? And it's a very real, it's a very, it's a very dangerous thing. It's, and, and, you know, there's different opinions on, on its effect, but there's something that doesn't, you know, <laughs> so, so you cannot contract something. Uh, you cannot contract the, the virus unless you come within proximity of somebody that has it, right? There's something, you can't get it from a device, you're safe if you just use FaceTime, right? But you miss out on what you get when you're actually in the presence of somebody. And, it, it, you know, right now we're, we're counting on it being a good thing, right? But you can see that also there's another side to it that we'll get to a little bit. That even, you know, sometimes somebody, you'll, you'll be in church and, you, and you'll, and, 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 and somebody offends you in the body of Christ, and so you withdraw. And you know what just happened is much dangerous than what you felt when you felt that offense. Because what the enemy wants to do is cause you to withdraw. And there's a principle with immunity to diseases that you need to be exposed to them. You need to be... There's, there's a reality in the body of Christ for each one of us that for us to become strong, to become immune to the enemy, we got to get around each other. Because from each other, we gain an immunity to the enemy's threats against us. Amen? So, I'm going to go through some things here this morning. Let's just, let's just count on God Showing us some things. He's here right now. The almighty God. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. The counselor. He's here for us right now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I know that he wants to move in our midst. And, and we have a hunger and a desire for, for the moving of his spirit among us. Amen. But I don't want to be just desiring things that are apart from his face. I want to know him. Amen? 
And he calls us to this place, each one of us. We're being called, it doesn't matter how far you've gone in this already. He's calling us deeper. He says, you need to know that I'm right, I'm right before you. It's my face. It's not a device. Aren't you glad for that? Because we can do that with God. We can, we can make him go through all kinds of other things. Oh, I know my, you, even with your worship, you have to be careful. No, let's know him. Let's turn it off sometimes. Just talk to him face to face. Say, God, I, I don't presume anything. I'm just here for you. Amen? And I'm getting other stuff. Actually, I, I wrote a little song about this last night. It's always kind of awkward to do new songs because it's a challenge and I got to get from over there to over here and everything. But it basically says, you have my focus. You have my heart. My full attention is where you are. I'm going to listen to what you say. Because transformation is my passion. Amen? There has to be a fixation. David wrote about this. He says, I fix my heart on you. I fix my heart on you. So many that came after him got their hearts diverted to stuff. And David said, I fix my heart on you. On you. I'm so thankful we don't have to be religious. We don't have to get into another voice. We don't have to know a bunch of scripture yet, but we have to get in his face and say, God, I'm here. Here's my face. I'm looking in your face, and we're getting started here with something. Amen? It's kind of like those prerequisite things that you never get past. You never get past this. You never progress religiously past the face of God. Amen? All right. Are you excited? Man, y'all are thrilled. I can tell. So we started talking about this last week. That to acknowledge is to acquire knowledge. To acquire knowledge. So um, have you ever just been completely ignored by somebody? Here's the dangerous thing about texting is you don't even know if you're being ignored or not. <laughs> I guess maybe there's ways you can find out. But, but one of the, the, the greatest ways to honor somebody is just to acknowledge them. And, you know, some of the, to, to dishonor is just to fail to acknowledge. You know, honoring God isn't just singing a song. Honoring God is acquiring knowledge of his presence, of his will, and of his purpose in our lives. Amen? So I, I've got uh, three R's that are my, kind of my corral of what it means to, to uh, acknowledge. It's not just enough to say, there you are. <laughs> That's not enough, is it? Just to say, hey, I, I remember they were there. Acknowledge is going to, going to go beyond that. It's going to, it's, it's going to first of all, there's a, there's a complete recognition of a presence. You know, I was thinking about it even this morning, how certain people, especially like movie stars and stuff, we had this happen one time. <laughs> we were living out in California. We lived in, in one of the most beautiful places, I believe, is Thousand Oaks, California. It's right up the grade from Ventura. Uh, Newberry Park, and there's, there's a, a place called Hidden Valley, and it's a place where a lot of movie stars live, and you go over a little, uh, you go over into this canyon, and, and there's the main highway coming, you know, through California's going like not too far from it, but you get over into this valley, and it's like, it's, it's a hidden valley. It's, it's really beautiful. It might be where that, uh, that dressing comes from. Yeah, I, I think it might be. There's some horse ranches in there and stuff, you know. But, so I, my parents were in town, so we, we took them over there, and I had, I worked, for the, I worked with this electrician, so I was working part-time, I was a worship leader, but I was working part-time, and I worked, one of the guys I worked with was an electrician, and he worked for a lot of movie stars, and he told me, he said, he, he, we went down this road, and he said, uh, Tom Selleck lives right up that road. It was just a dirt road, just with a little uh, gate on it, but I, I knew where it was, and so, does anybody know who Tom Selleck is? <laughs> Isn't that funny? I bet you there's some young people don't know who Tom Selleck is. <laughs> Magnum P.I., you know, and, and uh, 
Oh, yeah, Blue Bloods, yeah, yeah. So you should, should know. Yeah, he looks a lot different now. But anyway, um, so anyway, <laughs> so anyway, my parents were in town, and uh, uh, we drove past the entrance. We were driving down. I'm taking them to show them Hidden Valley, and we go past where I, my friend had told me where he, he, he lives, and I look at my rearview mirror, and sure enough, a pickup comes out of that driveway. And so I kind of slow down a little bit, you know. <laughs> and sure enough, it's Tom Selleck in a pickup right behind us. And we, and we go all the way, and he follows us all the way through and, until we get to the freeway, and he pulls up right next to us. <laughs> Tom Selleck. And my dad takes a picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife cringes. <laughs> she, but you know what? I bet that wasn't the first time that happened to Tom Selleck. And I went to get some gas right after that, and I felt like I had to tell somebody. I just saw Tom Selleck. You know what? When somebody that you admire, that you think is somebody, you just get in their presence, it does something to you. I was, I was breathing a little bit heavier. You know? This is terrible, isn't it? It's just, you know, somebody famous. I, I, was, I was within a car length of a famous person, you know? Does this have, Now, I just dare you to get in the presence of somebody. I don't know. Matthew McConaughey. I don't know who it would be. Some, some famous uh, minister. I don't know. Joel Osteen. You know, who, whoever. When you get in the presence of somebody that you have a high impression of, you do more than just recognize that they were there. Right? <laughs> okay. So, so acknowledging will not just be the recognition of their presence, it will become, it will include an acknowledging of who they are. Coming to know them. You can't know somebody that you're not even looking at them. You have to start looking at them. We have to learn to look at God more. Most of the time when we come to God, we can be looking at we want what we want from him. Because, and you know what, I, I, ta- I, I, I would communicate this to my choir because you can tell if somebody is infatuated with God by the, the look on their face. Because when you're looking in the face of God, it causes your face to be at rest, at peace, and at joy. Amen? It will affect your countenance. He's the glory and the lifter of your head. So it's nothing, it's no condemnation, but your face isn't in his face if your face is downcast. Amen? Because you'll gain some knowledge and it will change how you look. And then it, so this is the full encompassing of acknowledging. You see them, you're impressed by them, by who they are, and you're changed by who they are. You respond to that. Amen? Ah, this is good. So we're just going to look at recognizing a little bit today. And uh, with seeking, you're not going to actually observe that somebody's there, that God's there until you actually go to, to seeking them. And this word is used a few time in, times in the word. And so I'm going I'm to lean on a little bit to help us even just saying, are we actually seeing God? Are we recognizing him? We have to have a, there has to be something within us that's saying, I want to, I want to. It can come from a need, and we saw this last week. Most of the people, most of the time, people even lift up a prayer instigated, started from a need in their life, right? You got a sickness, you got a lack, you have something that you, and so, oh, well, I guess we'll go to God, right? And God's not mad if you come to Him because of a need. In fact, all the people that Jesus touched had a need. And he said, I'm not mad at you for having a need, but I want you to find me on the other side of your need. Amen? So the, a lot of people come with a need, but you know what? There were 10, 
there were 10 uh, lepers. And only one of them got what Jesus really was after. Only one of them. Because there's going to him. Not just, most of us, we just want an experience in God that allows us to go on with our life. And I'm telling you what, if we're going to be his people, if we're going to be the ones that he visits, has a visitation, we're going to be those who, he's our God all the time. Amen? So there needs to be, there can be a need, but you know for us, I believe there's a way for us to tap in to the seeking of God in the wondering. Now, I've talked to some people here recently that said, I just don't know. You know, they, they, don't, they, they haven't given their life to God yet. And so they said, well, I still don't know. And I said, you know what? That's not a bad thing to not know. But you need to just say, hey, God, I don't talk to the right place. Start saying, okay, I'm wondering about some stuff. Instead of re receding into yourself or talking to somebody else about it that doesn't know either, and you just go wondering together. It's a reason to say, oh, there's a God that created the heavens and the earth. I think I'll look at him. I think I'll seek an answer from him. Amen? Amen? And then, you know what? In each one of us is built a longing for God that nothing else will satisfy. Every one of us are searching and we're filling it up with something else if we're not filling it up with Him. Why do people get on substances? Because there's a longing. Why do we, why, you know what? You can do this with entertainment, with movies. And I think this has been happening a lot you know, during the last uh, couple months. People have been binging on Netflix series and, and all kinds of other things. Why? Because there's, there's something that needs to be filled here. <laughs> and the tragedy of this, of this time right now will be of the missed opportunities to actually find their creator. To find the redeemer in the middle of this. But I believe God's calling each one of us. You know what? Let's, for some reason, let's tap in to a seeking of not just what we're going to get from him, but his face. Oh, man. It, it could just settle on us even right now. Just the face of our God. The face of our God. Amen? You know what I think is amazing? I, I was thinking about this. Um, are you all good this morning? All right. You, you can respond at any time. Um, but, but we have a little, uh, I, I think children are so uh, revealing in this way. And, and you know what, if, if you have some really little ones, sometimes you forget these, some of these things. But we have a new little guy named Liam, uh, Haley's little guy. And uh, he just turned one. But, you know, um, from the time... You know, they, they, can, they can start to look. Have you ever noticed this? Little babies, they don't look at your belly button. They don't look at your, you know, they don't look at your elbow. Where do they look? They look right in your eyes, don't they? There's something going on in our eyes. I remember we, we had this guy when I was a worship leader up in Ohio. He, he always liked to come up to me and he said, he'd look at me in my eyes. Say, I see Jesus in your eyes. It was always nice to have him, him do that, you know. But we are made as, as human beings to have face time, to be affected by somebody's gaze. In our relationship with God, we're not going to know him just from his word. We're going to know him from his eyes, from his face. Amen? I don't think it's all that. It's, it's not something we just naturally do. But if you get in the presence of God like in worship, it, you will be like a child. Again, I think this is maybe what Jesus is talking about, becoming like a child. What does a child do? They just look in your eyes. Right? 
And I believe that's partly what we need to, to cultivate in acknowledging God. Is just, let's just look in his eyes. Amen? Now, it needs to be a, a, a lengthy gaze. It needs to be one that's not interrupted by other things. Other things can be going on, but a people that know their God know him continually. Amen? All right. So there is a reward for those who are expectantly looking. And you know what? I, I, if you'll bear with me, boy, I'm going to try to get through some of this stuff because I got some, it's been good already, but we need to get through some stuff, okay? All right, everybody say, Pastor Steve, hurry, real, talk real fast. All right. So you all are familiar with this passage, though, Hebrews eleven six. 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe what? That he is. It's the beginning of acknowledging, right? And that he does what? Rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I saw this passage in a different way in this context. Because most of the time when I've looked at this before, I started thinking of all the things I wanted in my life. That if I just, if I just believed that God existed, that he would reward me with the stuff I want. But I mean, it's really clear in this passage, what, if somebody is seeking something, how do you reward them? You give them what they're seeking, right? You don't give them something else. And I think this is part of our issue. We're seeking a lot of other stuff. Can't be, I'm not talking, you're the choir, we're talking about somebody else. But, right? We can, we can be seeking God with an ulterior motive that he's going to reward us with something else. And no, he says, I'm going to reward you with me. Huh. That's a reward? It's the greatest of rewards. Amen? So you can't even please God until you're recognizing that he's there and seeing him as the reward of your search. Amen? I'm telling you, this stuff is critical for us. We don't get to just have a move of the Spirit that we can enjoy the waves of it and everything else. What's it for? It's for knowing Him. Amen? All the gifts of the Spirit, they're for knowing Him. Not for stuff. Jesus came to give us life. And life Abundantly, more abundantly. It's not going to be found in stuff that we can seek on our own. It's going to be found in seeking his face. Oh, this is good. So there's a need for proximity, all right? Ephesians 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Why do we need to get face to face? Why do we as a body, because this has been a debate in our nation right now, why do we as, as a church need to get together? We could just stay home and just stream. No, we need proximity. <laughs> we need proximity. Let me see something. I've got... Um, no, let me keep going. Oh, no, let's go to this next one. Praise the Lord. I've got some notes here that I didn't. Yes. Okay. Yes, they're there. All right. Praise God. Now I can get those when I need them. All right. Let's keep going. For those who will truly come to know him... They will seek his face over his provision. In his face is found the knowing of him. You know, there's people that go to seminary for eight years to, be, to get a certificate of religion. And there's a child that looked into the face of his God that knows God. Information doesn't equal knowing him. The information we gain, unless it's exalting a knowledge of his face, is actually worthless also. 
you know, uh, well, I won't go there. It's just, we have to be careful that we become critical of other people based upon our superior knowledge of God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the more you know about God, the more you have love for other people. <laughs> and the less you're judgmental about somebody else. Because you realize that the difference between you and them and God, there's no difference that you can even see. Even though sir, you're so elevated in your knowledge. Because the only knowledge that counts is his face. Amen? So with proximity is transformation activation. So I just want to touch on this a little bit because uh, uh, my wife showed me there, there's a doctor that's, that's talking about some of the uh, immunities, and we talked about this, that uh, for, uh, there, there's a danger in isolation. There's a danger in, in, in being uh, 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 kept from everybody. And uh, let me just read my note here that I found. because Just in general. Well, I mean, there's, there's a place for it. But uh, I found this article with regard to this. Because partly what I'm wanting to get to is, is that, you know, there's no reason... For to love, and you do not grow in love unless you're being challenged in love. Your immune system doesn't get strong unless it's challenged, unless it's exposed to something. Now, there is a time for, for uh, being, being isolated. You know, there's a time for distancing, and that's what we're doing here this morning. Um, but you know what? A, a big part of, I think, our success over this thing is going to be is when people develop an immunity to it because they are exposed to it. There's a lot of that going on. Now, I'm saying this not to, to get into the weeds with that, but I do want to say that there is a necessity for proximity in the presence of God and with each other. So we have face time because it's in that challenge that we're going to grow. Love does not grow without a challenge. And it's by love that we show that we know him. Amen? What are we finding when, when we look into the face of God? A perfect God accepting the presence of an imperfect child that he is made to be righteous by the blood of his son. Amen? The change doesn't take place until the face time does. We, it requires proximity. Amen? Amen? Let me just read this article a little bit, and this, uh, this isn't to get into the weeds too much, but, but it is to kind of show that, that we, cannot be, we cannot be trying to protect ourselves from something. We have to get into it. God calls us to be part of a body. Amen? So let me read this. And Parents constantly worry about keeping their children clean and safe from harm. However, excessive steriliz sterilizing of their environment can do them more harm than good. Studies prove that exposing kids to microbes present in the great outdoors can help their immune system become stronger and more robust. Wondering whether exposure to germs boosts kids' immune system? Here's a small piece of reed which explains how germ exposure is healthy for kids. Is this rubbing anybody the wrong way? <laughs> Not meant for that, but I'm wanting to get it to, to some points that we can apply to uh, in, in our relationship with God. Parents' fixation on indoor-centric, ultra-clean lifestyles is weakening the children's re resistance against illnesses. Most parents believe that all germs are bad, but this is untrue. Actually, most germs just stimulate the Im immune system and make the child stronger. Sterilizing the home like a hospital can make the child's immune system hypersensitized, leaving them more susceptible to allergies, asthma, and even neurodevelopmental problems. Without exposure to germs and dirt early in life, the immune system does not learn how to control its action, uh, reaction to regular invaders like pollen and dust. This can result in the immune system misfiring later in life and causing allergies and other illnesses. Researchers believe that immune system of children 
of the previous era to be more robust than that of kids today. This is because of the fact that parents then had a more relaxed attitude to germs. And the children's bodies were strengthened by exposure to a multitude of microbial interactions. I need some applause for saying that. Okay. <laughs> to, to back this theory, studies were conducted on the immune profiles of Amish children who lead the, an extremely simple lifestyle that was free of the modern amenities and in which farming uh, played a key role. The research found that the youngsters who lived in small, microbe-rich farms and got exposed to germs that significantly lowered rates of asthma, uh, uh, they, it, it significant, uh, significantly lowered rates of asthma. Today, when children do not get enough exposure to microbes, their immune system starts weakening. This, in turn, increases the chances of allergic responses. So to boost their children's immunity, overall health and well-being, parents should let their little one get a little exposure to germs by, and it goes into all these things. They said, your dog licking your face, eating stuff that dropped on the floor. They go through a whole bunch of stuff, and they said, you know what, it's, it's actually... It's actually building up your immune system. And so, how does this apply to what we're talking about today? Well, you know what we're even doing here this morning? We prayed for this this morning, that, that the Word of God would be a challenge to us. Right? The church, uh, the, the, the Word of God, and getting in the face of God is going to be a challenge to our flesh. It's going to feel like a threat. And it is a threat. But we don't grow up unless we are. Unless our flesh is threatened. That happens in the presence of God. It requires proximity for this to take place. So many people are, are experiencing something that they're feeling challenged in their flesh. And instead of going to the presence of God, to the face of God, they withdraw. And they find what happens is it doesn't help you at all in that area. It causes you to become more weak. And your immune system to the threats of the enemy gets weaker and weaker. And he can push you over. He can blow on you and you fall over. Right? So, with proximity is transformation activation. I want to be transformed. Transformed, in the, We're not supposed to be conformed, right, to the world. We're supposed to be transformed. How's that going to take place? Not just, not just to information because it's like with any kind of thing that we're dealing with in our flesh, we will fail if it's just being told that we're supposed to stop it. If it's just a rule. But if you get in the face of God, you know what he said this? He, he said this. Are, are you familiar with this? He said, be holy because I'm holy. Say, well, thank you, God. I'm glad you're holy, but how does this work? Because proximity transmits transformation. And when you get in the face of God and you're no longer just wanting what he has in his hands... But you're actually exposed to his eyes and you're looking into his eyes. There's a transmission. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, it's, it's, it's like a virus in reverse, okay? <laughs> can, you, can you have that? You, you're being exposed. You're contracting godliness. And he says, you be holy because I'm holy. That only works for somebody that's in his face. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory. Oh, that sounds like it's not a device. It sounds like it's not through a confessional. It sounds like, it's, it's, it sounds like we, we're just right there in his face, aren't we? We're beholding him. And what takes place in that is a transmission of godliness that you don't get through preaching alone. Through correction alone. I'm so thankful that that's what the word is for. It corrects us. It's instruction in righteousness. 
But how is it accomplished? It's accomplished when we behold his glory with an unveiled face. We say, God, I'm just coming to you right as I am right now. Show me who you are. What happens then? We're transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Salvation comes in His presence face to face. My heart says of you, seek His face. This is this longing, isn't it? This is this drive from the inside of us. If, if we'll let this, have, this message go to our hearts today, we'll say, that's me. Did you know that your, your spirit right now, your soul is telling you right now. It's agreeing with what I'm saying. It's saying, seek His face. Listen to what He's saying. Listen to what He's saying. Seek His face. Seek His face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. This is said, I, I have to have you. I, don't, I, I, can't, I can't be in a place. I'm going to live in, a, in, in, in a, such a way that I'm not going to, my conscience isn't going to keep me from coming to you. <laughs> You've been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior. What was Jesus? What was Jesus crying on the cross? He said, my God, my God, what has, has happened? You've forsaken me. What was the biggest thing I think that was in Jesus? Keep it him. Separation. He had to be in proximity with his Father. What happened on the cross? The biggest thing, it wasn't, it wasn't the crown of thorns. It wasn't the stripes on the back. It wasn't the blood pouring out. It was the separation. It was the separation. What needs to be the biggest thing in our life? What's going on in our body? No, it's like I can't be separated from the face of my God. I have to be in his face. Amen? You'll get strength in his face. You'll get salvation. You'll be strengthened. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. What's interesting is this is from First Chronicles. Then it's, it's exactly the same in, in Psalm. It's, it's, it's plagiarized later on. Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, if my people, if my people. You don't get to be his people by just putting a placard, I'm his people, on you. You get to be a people by being transformed like the scripture we just saw from your glory to his glory by beholding his glory. Amen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and do what? Seek what? His face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land the things that we need you know we're supposed to take a bold advance to the throne of grace so we find help in time of need what is our pursuit though our pursuit is the throne our pursuit isn't the help we're not looking for the help we're looking for the the throne we go to the throne of grace and then we find help when we get there amen we're not seeking the help. We're seeking the throne. Amen. Transformation into a generation. What happens? This is what I want for this body of Christ. Amen. For this portion of the body. For us to become a people. You know, it's not enough to just be a person. We're supposed to be a people. You don't get to be just a person. God says, I called you to be a people. A part of a body. Who may ascend into the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. God of Jacob. You know what I like that? It, it, it's talking about this is how, this is a, an MO. This is a way of life. 
This is a culture. This is how things are done. Amen? Oh, we don't, we don't give in to that because this is what we do. Right? We don't give in to offense and strife. Those kinds of things. That's not who we are. We're, we're a people of God. We're a generation who seek Him. We have our face in His face. You know, it's really hard to slip into the things that are opposite of love when your face is in His face. Amen? Okay, one more. Can we just get a little bit more? This has been good, hasn't it? All right. Body parts. How many have a body part? How many are a body part? How many... <laughs> What happens to your body part if one little section of it gets a little bit of virus that sneaks in there? Gets your whole, it affects your whole body, doesn't it? But what happens to your whole body when something does come in and you deal with it correctly and the way God has made us to fight off stuff is activated? You know how it's activated? It's activated in the body of Christ by love. And every time something starts to come in, the enemy wants to come in to, 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 to sow discord and to, to sow strife and division and separation and weakness. <laughs> he wants to tear down our immune system. You know what happens? When that body is joined together, it allows it to, as a whole, begin to not just fight it off, but to develop an immunity to it. Oh, man, this is better than you're hollering at me. It's good. Amen? Why do we come together? Because proximity establishes an immunity. It activates immunity. You will never be immune to something if you never come in contact with it. You have to come in contact with it. Amen? You'll never be affected by the power, by the salvation, by the, the restoration, the immunization of God until you get in proximity with not just Him. Don't you like what Jesus said? It's not enough to just love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. supposed to love the body of Christ. Amen? All right. Ephesians 4.16, for his body has been formed in his image and is closely joined together and constantly connected as one. And every member has been given divine gifts to contribute to the growth of all. And as these gifts operate effectively throughout the whole body, we are built up and made perfect in love. But I just want to, I just want to have a lot of fun. I just want to have stuff. This is so much better. Amen? The other stuff is what finds you when you're seeking Him. Amen? There's a purpose for our face in His face. So we're, gonna, we're talking about acknowledging, right? And I just want to talk about, and, and this morning, really all we're saying is recognizing his face. Simply getting in his face. Transformation overwhelms everyone who looks in the face of God, who beholds his glory. Things begin to change from that point on. We've seen, we've talked about some of the evidence of it already. Can you see how essential this is? This is the other side of religion. This is knowing your God. Amen. Did you have something you wanted to share too? Or no? Oh, this is the time. I, I thought you were already ready, so I... You mentioned she mentioned something with regard to this, and, and you know, um, I, this is one of the biggest dangers I, f I feel like that we can get into during this time is to com become complacent uh, 
and, and get used to being separated. And there's some ease in that, if we're not careful, that we have to fight back against. Amen? That we have to say, no, it's God's designed for us. He's, he's designed for our, our bodies themselves. He's made it so that it's not a vaccine that, that heals us, keeps us whole. It's God's design of our body. It's the way he's made us. And, you know, it's not anything else than the face of God that's going to cause us to be strong spiritually, emotionally, and in our souls. Well, I just was, I was actually listening to Joyce Meyer and this, um, she was talking about giving and being a blessing and being a part of the body of Christ. And there's been something deep on the inside of me that has, has, I know this has been a season for us, a transitional season, a season for us to sort of dig in, you know, get some things from God, find out what's next. And it's been good. It's been a recovery time. A lot of folks have not had time off. It's been a time for them to have time with family. And, um, you know, a lot of people are are just, I know Buddy hasn't had to travel. He normally has to get on a plane and travel a couple times a week. And so it's just been kind of a downtime for some folks. Now, I know for Jana, it's been the opposite because <laughs> she works for the government and is like she's like in high speed right now. So it's, it's sort of it's different for everybody. Um, but there's just been something that's been itching on the inside of my spirit about several things. But the one thing about us not being able to get together. It's just driven me nuts on the inside. And I told, I shared a little bit last week, but I really feel the plan of, of God is for us to be united. And the plan of the enemy is to divide and conquer. So when we can't be together, you know, and we're going to do what we're going to do. We're going to, you know, church outside the walls and all that. And it's great. But it's been bothering me so much because I know that it's time. It's the hour for a move of the spirit. Right here we are, dead center in the time of God. We've been praying for revival. We've been praying for an outbreak of the Spirit. We have an outbreak of something else. And what does it do? It doesn't draw us in. It, 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 it's making us, you know, you have an X here and X here and lines here. And we all have to make sure when we go to the store. When I got next to a lady the other day. I said, oh, I'm so sorry that I'm standing next to you. Oh, no, it's okay. You know, everybody's like, forget it. it, it not everybody, but, you know, and I'm thinking, and I know there's a purpose for it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coming against that. But just what's bothering me is that we're having to be so separated. And then the other thing is, it just seems to me that there is a plan of the enemy to try to, you know, we're creatures of habit. And we can get into a habit of sitting at home and just making it common. And uh, this is kind of comfy for me to sit on my couch and eat my, what was it, y'all ate? Whatever, bonbons or <laughs> biscuits and gravy while you're watching church. You know, I'm not coming against it, y'all. Please hear my heart. There's something on the inside of me that's been scratching about this. It's like there is something the enemy has tried to do with this. Of course, we know he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. We know there's people that have lost lives over it. And that's not God. That's the enemy. And we pray for those. We pray for those who are on the front lines. But the scripture, she was you all know the story. When Jesus went to wash the disciples' feet, and Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Here's Jesus, the Messiah. King of kings, Lord of lords. They know who he is. He's come to save the world. The master. And he's ready to serve. The leader is ready to lead and serve others. Now there was some proximity. He was getting ready to take off their sandals and wash their feet. And he said, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus said, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You have no share in my companionship with me. And it just absolutely hit my spirit when I heard that. I thought, that's what it is. 
what happens when we're not gathering together as we're not serving one another. I was ready to have a foot washing this morning <laughs> and us wash your feet because we're here to serve one another. Who's the greatest in the kingdom? The servant. How can we serve separated? We can pray. We can do those things. We can give online. You know, we can do those things. But the purpose of the body of Christ, Jesus came to serve. He gave his all. He gave his life. The purpose of, uh, for us is to serve one another. And do you know that's how we know God? One of the ways we know him is by, like what he was saying, is by serving one another, by coming together, by worshiping together, by lifting up the name of Jesus together, by praying. You can see how every, there's been joints that have brought supplies here today. Some, some joints were here at 8 o'clock getting ready f for other joints that came in who brought donuts, who made coffee, who another joint made offered up prayer. Others have offered up prayers. Other joints have come in and participated. So maybe your part was just to participate, giving, whatever it is. Every one of us have brought in a supply of the Spirit. And that supply, like that Ephesians 4.16 says, we come together to grow. We can't grow separated. And we can't grow in the knowledge of who he, he is without each other. It's like what he was saying. We've got, to have, we've got to have some immunities built up to what the enemy's trying to do so that we can grow stronger. We grow in love. We grow stronger by what we go through. You grow through what you go through. So how do we grow, grow through anything I'm tired of sitting at home. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Somebody put something, uh, they asked 100 different TV shows. How many of these 100 TV shows have you watched ever? And I thought, my goodness. Some people have watched like 20 different shows. And I'm thinking, what a waste of your life. I'm not, I'm not trying to be condemning because I know, you know, it's fun it's to do those things. But I just feel like the Holy Spirit saying it is time to get serious. It is time to seek my face. It is time, like Pastor Steve, to know me more, to acknowledge me in your moments. Amen. I told this story really quick before, and y'all might remember, when we first moved here, our kids were in an upheaval because we picked, plucked them out of their comfort church, their comfort friends, their comfort schools, their comfort home, comfort position in a church. And we brought them here to start a church with no other people than family, no monetary back, backing. It was just a whole faith move. And our kids were just having a cow. <laughs> they were... They, there were some other things that, you know, just they were experiencing hurt over. And we went through a lot of strife. We pushed through a lot of strife in our life during that time. And they were, and of course, you know, teenagers are going to all kind of fight anyways at different times. Unless your kids are perfect. If your kids are perfect, then please meet me afterwards and I need to discuss how you did it. But anyway, one of the things my husband was really pushing was he was talking about a life of worship, worship life, is acknowledging God at every moment of your life. That was the name of our church at the time, worship life, living a life of worship. It's not just a song, but it's everything you do is worship unto God. And so he said, we need to acknowledge God in every moment. So our kids were fighting, and the Holy Spirit said, now's the time to acknowledge me. I said, you got to be kidding me. Have you ever heard three kids fighting with each other? And you're supposed to be acknowledging God in this moment. So I said, okay, guys, stop. Do you remember this, Hayden? Stop. And I, we're going to hold hands. It took us 30 minutes to hold hands because everybody was fighting. <laughs> they didn't want to touch each other. And I want you to, the person on your right, I want you to pray for the person to your right. There was just the four of us, you know. But that took another 30 minutes. But do you know what we did? We acknowledged God in that moment and it dispelled the strife that was trying to 
rule in our house. So we can acknowledge God now. We can acknowledge God in the middle of whatever we're going through. Hallelujah. And his presence becomes so real. And we're drawn into that place. And it absolutely kicks the devils behind out your house and out of your life. Amen. You believe that? How many want to acknowledge God in every moment of your life and know him more? Well, stand to your feet. Did Can you I sing something? my song? I figured you were going to sing. Don't stand to your feet. Oh, don't yet. stand to your feet then. Actually, if you want to, you can do exercises. <laughs> no. <Just kidding. laughs> so I, uh, I'm going to be, be obedient with this song. Just you, bear with me as I just sing this song. Just look <laughs> unto Jesus. Okay. Um, but no, I, I, it's, it's, it's timely just for this sermon, so I don't want to let it pass me by. So I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. Um, it's, it, it needs to be like a heart cry. It's my heart cry. If you can join me in this heart cry, okay? Um, you have my focus. You have my heart. My full attention is where you are I will be listening it is your voice I'll hear cause transformation to your will is my passion you have a focus you have my heart, my full attention is where you are. I will be listening. It is your voice I'll hear, cause transformation to your will is my passion. You are faithful, faithful to surround with your glory and triumphant sounds. There is no other place I can go where in your light I'm shown. foundation of your love you have a focus you have my heart my full attention is where you are I will be listening your voice I'll hear this transformation to your will is my passion hallelujah Lord God I just pray a prayer over each one of us that have been listening here today Lord I pray that there would be an increased fixation of focus hallelujah God show us how to do it Call us by your spirit here today, Lord God. Lord, I pray that there would be a moving and a, and a drawing by your spirit on our hearts, Lord God. Lord, we don't want to we don't want to just be like somebody else. We just don't want to just do stuff because it's something to do, Lord God. We just want to be in your face, how you've made for each one of us to be, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we just want to present ourselves right now. God, show us you. God, reveal your glory to us. God, help us to know you in your glory. And help us to be transformed. Lord, we want to glorify you with our lives. Hallelujah. I thank you for answered prayer. I thank you that it's time today in your presence, Lord God. It's been an effective time. Hallelujah. Fruit will come from our time together, our proximity together. 
in your face today. We give you glory for it, Father God. You're amazing. You're doing amazing things in our midst even right now. We give you glory for it, Father God. You're worthy of honor and glory. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand up with me now? Let's just praise him just a little bit before we go. Hallelujah.